I need to start getting some more people over. Um, yeah, so far, three have seen the house. All kids. Um, so I'm curious about my friends from Republican Club or Reiki Club. Uh, my kids think the house is really cool. And they're commenting like, there's so many places to sit. I mean, like, they're, they're <laughs> or like sitting in the formal living room. We're grabbing a dining room table. We're pulling up a bar stool. We're sitting over here in the family room. We're all there in the sunroom. And it's like, huh, there's just so many. And then we were down in the basement level. And then there's seating there, too. There's seating on the deck. There's seating on the lower deck. You can sit anywhere. You can sit at the bar stools down on the lower area. <laughs> I think that my uh, Republican friends will walk in and say, oh, this is the perfect place for a fundraiser. My Reiki friends will say, oh, wow. Oh, what room could we pick to do a Reiki share? And I'm not even sure. I, I have... Um, yeah, I had to do a lot of thinking when we first got this house. I even thought that I wanted to take over the office at first to be like a Reiki room. But, um, but now it's down to where there, it might be this windowless room. It doesn't even have to be a set room anyway. I mean, it can be setting up a portable Reiki table, you know, almost anywhere. I mean, right now without Mark, living here. I mean, it could even take place in the master bedroom sitting area. So, um, well, I suppose even with Mark here, if he's out here watching TV, TV is another issue um, that I need to start doing something. So let's see, what do I need to do? I need to, um, well, if we had enough time, me and my son could, could take the equipment here um, versus the AV guy and uh, oh my god it's really raining so this is the angle so the door you see is my pantry door and on the left of the pantry is kitchen cabinets and on the right of the uh, pantry is the main kitchen and the, you see a piece of the bar there <clears throat> so ki kitchen pantry more cabinets and then the breakfast table over there so I'm doing that area as a juicing blending coffee bar but it was funny when I was asking my son to start you know moving things around um, he was examining everything. He was even opening certain boxes to see what it was, see where he thought it should go. So um, he saw this chocolate fountain, and I, and I said, yeah, I know. I've never even opened the box. And I said, I guess it goes downstairs in the basement. And he says, well, why not in the kitchen? So I said, I, I guess so. And so um, I thought he was going to just bring the, you know, the unopened box over and find a spot. No, he actually opened the box, and found a place to put it on the counter. <laughs> so, uh, what I'm finding is that this is a, an interesting twist on things where I'm letting go a little bit. <clears throat> and... It's somewhat accidental, somewhat on purpose. Um, when my stepdaughter and her boyfriend came over to sleep over the first time, she mentioned she was going to bring bedding because he's allergic to the cats. And even though I did tell her that the new bedding that I had for the, for the new bed really didn't have any cats on it. But anyway, so I just said, well, all right. So I didn't put anything down there. I didn't put pillows or anything well she didn't actually bring enough stuff and I said oh um 
yeah, I wish you had roamed around because I had a, a bunch of stuff laid out in the spare upstairs room. And so anyway, um, so she brought more stuff over the next night. And then she says, you know, I'm thinking of just like buying a set of sheets, but, you know, just to keep it all, you know, cat free and everything. And I said, I, 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 for some reason, I almost saw that coming. And I said, yeah, well, you know, and I guess package it up in plastic or something afterwards. If you, and she says, yeah, to get really, you know, picky about it. And then, and then I said, it's a queen bed. And she goes, oh, yeah, I forgot to ask about that. So, and I said, you know, and then if you've got any, I said, I've got a whole bunch of hair dryers that sooner or later I can distribute them to bathrooms. I said, but, you know, if there's any items that you have, like, extras of and want to just keep it here, um, you know, that's fine. I'm going to try to get a pull pass for her. I, I think that, well, I don't just, I don't know how they do it, but... For all practical purposes, she could end up semi living here. Um, so anyway, that's what I want to est establish and get her a pool pass. Not her boyfriend, but her. And then she could take him in as a guest if she wanted to. And that would just be the only kid. Um, but some, some communities, they just, this one would be, it's a 55 plus, but it's still okay. You can have kids over 18 living with you. Um, but, you know, if they want to see driver's licenses with the address change, well, I don't even have that right now with my address change. Um, so anyway, you know, the two of them and then her boyfriend has... I don't know, start to, like, establish a, a presence. He wanted to take some bar stools from here down to the downstairs lower level. Now, part of it may have to do with Mark not being here because he has this, you know, ornery presence about him. And I have, in the past... I don't want to say fallen in line because that's putting too much blame on Mark. I have in the past um, linked up with the mindset that it, not even from an ornery perspective, but just from a perspective of that, you know, I didn't necessarily want to have people over until the house was finished and complete. But there's this interesting buy-in factor that is happening now. And I bought a puzzle, and over the weekend the puzzle was complete, and there was one piece missing. The um, puzzle, I, I looked at all the reviews from this puzzle company before I bought it, and there was some people saying, ouch, that one, ooh, ah, oh, every once in a while. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Good God. It's traveling. Oh my God. It's a cramp. Oh shit. Oh my God. I never got these before. Before my surgery and every once in a while like tying a shoe or something I get this and what I'm afraid of right now is when it <clears throat> pops out or whatever it does it just feels <sighs> I think it did but it didn't do it in a weird way you know, like it didn't feel like there was going to be like an alien blasting out of my stomach. Oh, God. It's just, oh, now i got to be careful about the way I'm sitting. Uh, yeah, I just, I guess when they, 
I, I, I don't know if there's any theory or... I don't even know if there's any connection. But Oh, well, okay, so that was that. Um, so I was talking about, like, kind of, um, you know, setting up this house or the way it's begun to come along is with some more involvement. And I can continue that with my other friends. So, for instance, when I was at my Reiki share on Friday, I was doing Reiki to one particular person, and I was on the side of her to where I was looking at this wall that had a lot of pictures, and there was a picture of Jesus there, 8 by 10. A nice print, you know, of a, a painting, but it was a nice pose, a nice face close up. I hadn't really not an image you see too often. And um, mainly for concentration purposes, I just locked on <clears throat> locked on to that picture. <coughs> Sometimes when you look at anything like that, it you might it might sort of change around a little bit. So I had like halo, no halo, the eyes, you know, glimmering and stuff. And I didn't think about anything else. I didn't really concentrate on energy or anything. I just, you know, and then during that period that I was still considering myself doing Reiki to the person, because every now and then I would get a flash of warmth, um, I also got this other parallel track going on where I had already been thinking about uh, doing some sort of like a, like a silhouette outline large scale religious type symbol or something like that in a room that I w would want to do Reiki in. And um, at first I thought a mosaic. Then I realized mosaics are not for me. I took that class, but no, they're way too slow. Um, so even like a black like outline or something, you know, big. And then, and then when I was doing the Reiki, I thought, well, why not... Because, again, I would have thought, oh, well, I don't want to invite them over to my new Reiki room until they can see this cool thing that I did, which might take, you know, who knows long. Well, they all paint. Most of them paint. And when I was there, I thought, he was, he was telling me in this picture, ask them to participate. Have them come over with the room blank. And... Um, you know, talk about it, paint together, do, you know, something like that. And have this, this, I've got this new word that I've made up and I'm using it so often that I'm going to burn, burn out the word really fast. So I'm going to have to find some alternate words. But I, I like the word though. Um, energy profile. So um, it's something like the cat pissing, pissing in every single room. I'm doing that in this house. And, um, and then when, you know, people are over and they're sitting in each room and, and we're having good conversation or something, it, I'm saying that it establishes an energy profile. Um, I was commenting about how I liked my deck in my old house, but that that wasn't really any particularly interesting place for me until just the last few years. Um, and I just, you know, started going out there and started having, you know, more or less a meditation spot. And it wasn't anything special until I started going out there and, um, you know, kind of meditating in that spot, and then it became a spot. And so I, I almost thought, oh, I don't want to leave this house because of this spot. And no, I, I'm saying no, you can create it anywhere. And there's like certain things you can do, just physically flop down. That's how I sometimes need to, you know, decorate, of just like just stare and stare and stare and stare. But so, and, and then soon in the game, I want to um, get this uh, stager over 
because even like things like, you know, I don't want to go forever and ever and ever without pictures up. And that helps as well, too. In fact, I have managed to feel at home pretty quickly in this house. And I just brought a new batch of stuff in, but it had been nice and, and clean as of this afternoon when I had the help to put things away. Um, and so anyway, I just mentioned my Reiki friends, and then my Republican friends um, are, you know, likely going to be here and like, oh, well, maybe we can do the annual tea here. Oh, well, we could maybe set up, you know, some extra tables over here, or, or should it be in your downstairs level? Or if it's nice out, we can, you know, so it could be that. It could be like, oh, well, a fundraiser. Okay, well, you know, they would maybe want to stand up in front of the fireplace or something, you know, and and do their talk. Or, or um, well, actually, I need to change Republican clubs. I wonder who I'm going to get to attend the Republican meetings here. Um, there are a lot of U.S. flags hanging up in this neighborhood. So, you know, you know that they've got to be Republican. <laughs> so... Um, yeah. So, yeah. So tomorrow, me and my son are going to make one to two runs to bring stuff back and, and, and put it away. Which will be just so cool. I mean, having moved into a house... And then they were, they were commenting, too, of, like, you know, if I had moved in and hadn't bought some of the furniture that I bought, I mean, you know, there would have been a lot of bare spots here, bare rooms. So it it's, just, it's just bigger than the other house. It's bigger and more usable. You know, two floors rather than three. Uh, the downstairs basement, basement we didn't use for living in the other house. And um, the main um, living in the basement probably is going to be guests. And I asked my son, I said, so where do you want to sleep when you sleep over tomorrow night? And he says, oh, I don't know, maybe the upstairs room. And I think what he was doing is thinking, oh, well, okay, the downstairs room has been claimed. You know, I, I don't want that to happen exactly. But then he saw that I had a bunch of crap all over the bed there. And he says, oh, well, I could sleep, you know, in the downstairs. You know, we're, you know, stepdaughter had slept. That's kind of the guest room. Um, and I said, yeah, there's also a pull-out couch. You know. Uh, so. Oh. That's the, that's the look of me hearing a little, tiny, little sound. I mean, I've got, you know, cats. My cats are downstairs, and that's where I'm going to keep them. But I still, I, I've got things to do to make life better um, for them. And I need to set up a, a field trip way of doing things as well so that they can get into the bedroom, my bedroom, some nights as well. Right now, they're very disturbed. I've tried to take them into the bedroom some nights, and then they just want to get out, you know, and see the place. And I need to kind of let them know that they can be in the, the storage area, which is huge, it's bright, and it's going to contain more stuff for them pretty soon. They can be there, they can be in my bedroom, or they can be outside. But they can't have the free roam of the house like they used to. Um, it was really cool to be able to keep a puzzle out on the table. So. Um, all right.
But it's very late slash early in the morning. I ordered Mark another pair of sneakers. I just, the ones he had were brand new and I've just moved him around just too many places. And between two houses, I found everything else, all of his shorts and shirts that had gone missing a little bit too. But they were in a huge trash bag that I had taken from the assisted living place. Um, and I don't think that I would have accidentally trashed. I, I, don't, I don't really think so. If I had used a trash bag for moving, I don't think I would have trashed his shoes accidentally. But anyway, I'm sure it will turn, turn up, but I bought him an exact same pair because he liked them. And his um, rehab people told him that he needed sneakers and needed them right away, which means they're really optimistic um, because he's not he doesn't appear to be anywhere close to getting out of bed to me, but they're, they, they told him, just follow our instructions and you'll be fine. I, I think that he's starting to tell him things like, oh, oh, well, I'm, you know, nervous and I think I might fall and everything. And he has one guy who uh, is just sort of um, the occupational therapist who's just saying, just shut up and listen to us. One thing, though, when I went there tonight, he, this is the skankiest place that he has been out of all of the places. And I asked him tonight, I said, what is your estimated time of exit from the rehab place? Now, you know, I just wanted to know what he thought. And so he said, well, I think I might be in here two full weeks. He says, like a week after you get back from your trip. And I said, okay, so June 14th? I think it was when I said, no, wait a minute. I said, so, um, I said, so June 21st? Okay, yeah, I said 21st or 24th. And he said, oh, well, nothing happens over the weekends. And I said, okay, so June 21st. Okay, so June 21st. No, I said, I said, so June 22nd. We, I'll, uh, I'll schedule a welcome home, Mark, party for you at our house. Well, you know, I... The... I, I kind of wanted to just set a mental goal because there's some other, what I'm also thinking about is that place is just so nasty looking that the other thing is I'm thinking if he is not ready to go home or if he looks like he hasn't made much progress and who knows how long the insurance company is going to pay also. But I, um, I already have a plan B. Now, he doesn't have a plan B in his head. Uh, he's just figuring he's going to be there until he um, gets rehabilitated. But I'm already on to plan B, where if he's run out of insurance money at the rehab place, and the rehab places are more expensive than assisted living, um, so, I am beginning to think that it might be time to set him up as a permanent resident in an assisted living place. I mean, he's been bouncing around everywhere, and he's had Comcast accounts open and Comcast accounts closed and stuff. Uh, so, you know, I'm just beginning to think if he does not show significant progress, let's just say by the 4th of July, um, then, you know, then probably the insurance will have stopped and, and then it just seems as though 
It would seem like the goal at that point in time would be get him to an assisted living place that's as close to here as possible, which probably means the exact same place he was at before, which now that place looks like the Taj Mahal. Actually, it looked like the Taj Mahal to me right to begin with. They had this piano and all the women would sing and... and um, uh, so, okay, it's 2.30 in the morning, so, alrighty, oh, I got a cramp in my leg as well, just carrying in some stuff, um, okay, that's all.